American officials are moving right now to protect the more than 9,000 men and women in the U.S. Foreign Service, so many of them braving dangers abroad. The names of their fallen comrades will be etched on a wall at the State Department, and today President Obama paid his respects there, and Secretary Clinton spoke with fierce passion about their service. Tonight, ABC's John Carl has more about those who died. War was still raging when he first arrived in Libya last year. Ambassador Chris Stevens fully embraced one of the most dangerous diplomatic missions in the world. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Chris Stevens, and I'm the new U.S. ambassador to Libya. He risked his life to stop a tyrant, then gave his life trying to help build a better Libya. John McCain was with Ambassador Stevens when Libya celebrated its first ever free elections. Chris Stevens was one of the finest men I've ever known in my life. He loved the Libyan people. They loved him. Today on the streets of Benghazi, the Libyan people grieved for a friend. One sign saying, sorry, people of America. It's especially tragic that Chris Stevens died in Benghazi because it is a city that he helped to save. Three other Americans died with the ambassador, including Sean Smith, in Libya on a brief assignment. He was a father to two young children, Samantha and Nathan. They will grow up being proud of the service their father gave to our country. Two other still unnamed Americans died as well, diplomats who gave their lives representing the United States of America. All over the world, every day, America's diplomats and development experts risk their lives because they believe that the United States must be a force for peace and progress in the world. Jonathan Carl, ABC News, Washington. And now for the bigger picture, we turn to ABC's global affairs anchor, Christian Amanpour, who's reported from this region for years, was on the front lines for us, as you know, during the Arab Spring. What have you heard today, Christian, about whether this was al-Qaeda, a different kind of al-Qaeda, affiliated at all? Well, clearly, intelligence and security forces are looking into that. We don't really know, and I've been cautioned not to say that it is al-Qaeda in the Maghreb yet. They're still looking for exactly who is responsible. And today we were struck by something Secretary of State Clinton said, because I think a lot of Americans have been saying the same thing. How could this happen? She posed this question in a country we helped liberate. What does this say now about America in this region? Diane, I can imagine that so many Americans feel really desperate tonight, wondering precisely that question. The good news, Diane, if there can be any in this, is that Secretary Clinton said that this was a small and savage group. They did not represent the Libyan people or the government, and polls bear that out. The majority of Libyans and the Libyan government support the United States. The Libyan officials were very fast off the mark to condemn it today, to call it criminal, cowardly, to praise Ambassador Stevens, and to promise, I spoke to the Libyan ambassador, that they would work with the United States to track down, hunt down, and bring these killers to justice. And as Martha reported, Libyans carried the ambassador to That's the exactly hospital. exactly right. Thank you, Christiane.